All right, so my name is Sean Smith. I am uh, with the product management team in Oracle Labs working on Grawl VM. And uh, I'm going to talk today about um, Grawl VM native image and, and containerization of microservices. So it's a very big topic and it's, it's very short time. So we'll, we'll hit the high points and I think the, uh, the key features, the things you might want to know. And uh, hopefully this will be uh, useful to you. Let's go. So first thing is a safe harbor. So just, uh, you know, don't make any buying decisions and, and the usual uh, disclaimers. So I just want to start with sort of positioning Grawl VM within the Java ecosystem. So this is sort of a, a picture we use to describe all the various uh, parts uh, of the ecosystem. Uh, the big pieces being OpenJDK, where they're building the reference implementation for various versions of, of Java. So Java 7, 8, 9, 10, et cetera. So it's being built over there. And in contrast, the Grawl VM project is focused on compiler technology. So we're not interested in, in building, um, or we're not building a Java platform. We are working on basically improving performance of Java. So we're really focused on compilers. And, and that's uh, the core of the Grawl VM um, mandate. And we see that, that, uh, that compiler technology we're working on manifests itself in a couple or about three or three or four ways. In fact, there's a lot of, a lot of things we use this compiler tech for in Grawl VM, but it surfaces in, in key ways that uh, or key places that people can use it. So the first is as uh, the JIT compiler. So we plug the Grawl VM JIT compiler into Hotspot and uh, we basically improve performance of Java applications and, and any other bytecode based applications. So JVM native, Scala, uh, Java, uh, Clojure, et cetera. Uh, with Oracle, Grawl, Oracle um, Grawl VM, what you're getting is the Oracle JDK with the Grawl VM JIT compiler installed by default. So when you run the Java uh, and the run, run Java with something, you're basically running um, with the Grawl VM compiler. The second, and the one that we're going to focus on today, and we've done previous uh, webinars on this topic, so I'm, I'm going to give some background, but uh, um, there's more in depth in some previous webinars, which is native image, which is an ahead of time uh, conflation uh, facility for, for Java applications. And it has some really interesting qualities that are making it really, really uh, attractive for doing um, containerized workloads and microservices. And the third application of, of the Grawl VM compiler tech is uh, to support non-JVM native languages on the JVM. So bringing support for Ruby, uh, Python, et cetera, uh, to run those applications on the JVM uh, with good performance, not in some sort of interpreted mode or, or compatibility, but running them really fast. Uh, in case, in basically in most cases, well, in all cases, as far as I know, we're, uh, we're equivalent to or faster than the native run times for most of those, those platforms, those languages. So it's really interesting technology at the core of Grawl VM. But the focus today is on uh, containerization and, and Grawl VM native image. Like I said, um, this is a, a unique sort of um, development of, of uh, for our opportunity for Java developers to build applications that are small, run fast, and get deployed in containers uh, that are, it's, it's different experience than working with the, the JVM. So our, the goals that we obviously want to address here are, are fast startup time, low resource usage. So we want these applications to start up fast and be lightweight. We want them to be fast and lean. Right. We want to, to not uh, consume a lot of memory because if you're deploying applications to um, uh, containers and uh, containers to a given uh, compute infrastructure, you want to maximize the compute infrastructure. Uh, we also want these container images that we produce to be small. If you're putting Java in a container, you want it to be small uh, for all kinds of reasons, right? For mostly for distribution reasons, shipping them around. And the fourth thing that uh, is actually really key and which, which is sort of an interesting side effect of the native image technology is the ability to help minimize your vulnerabilities. So removing uh, security vulnerabilities through basically a code elimination. And that's a really interesting feature that uh, most people don't think of immediately when thinking of ahead of time compilation. So just to give you a, a taste of the kind of sort of fast uh, startup time and memory usage that we see, here's uh, Sebastian Deleuze and Andy Clement from the spring team. Uh, this is from last year and they're working on the spring native project, which actually this week went, uh, or last week went into uh, beta. So it's 0.9. Uh, just to sort of zoom in on the numbers they're seeing with Pet Clinic, we all know Pet Clinic. Uh, they saw a memory reduction of 75% for, for native image, or sorry, for the Pet Clinic compiled ahead of time. They saw it starting up 94% faster, right? So it's crazy numbers. Uh, the build time went up. By a lot, and that's because we do a lot of uh, analysis. I'll discuss this in a few slides, but we do a lot of analysis at build time rather than leaving it to runtime, like we would do with you running on the JVM. 
So just sort of as an example of sort of the, the order of the magnitude that we're talking about here for performance, uh, this is Hello World. Uh, it's because it's just small application, it's Hello World. You're just seeing most of the uh, sort of overhead for booting an application with a given runtime. So C code, RealVM native image, a Go app, and running on the JVM with, hot, with uh, JDK 11. And you see here the time, the boot time, essentially the runtime is, is basically in the, the C Go space, uh, you know, ballpark. Uh, the time to boot up a Java app uh, is significantly higher. And we'll see that in some examples as we go, uh, go along today here, uh, the differences in, in the experience. Uh, the second is memory consumption. So the memory usage require, required by uh, a typical ahead of time compiled Java app is quite small, uh, certainly a lot less than you would need if you're running on the JVM. And uh, interestingly, less than Go too. No, it's, it's interesting because Go and um, the GraalVM native image generate executable are fairly similar in that they're both you know, the, the application code compiled to machine code uh, coupled with garbage collector and other services. But uh, we do quite well, we're playing the right range. So if you're a Java developer and you're thinking you need to move to Go to, to go to cloud or containers, um, this is kind of evidence that this is actually not the case. Uh, just to give you a peek under the hood why this, what's going on here. Um, the red uh, on the left-hand side, you've seen just-in-time compiler. This is on JVM, that little Hello World app. Uh, booting up. Um, you see here a lot of CPU at the beginning um, because you're, the JVM is, is initializing itself. It's initializing the compiler, it's starting uh, thread pools, it's allocating space, it's actually reading the JVM, uh, the JDK bytecodes, uh, turn them into in-memory structures, interpreting them, then obviously compiler, compiling the hot bits. Uh, a lot goes on and then it settles down. So you're loading a lot of stuff into memory uh, and you're having to do a lot of work at boot time. If you compare that against the equivalent native image, it boots really fast because there's no reading of byte codes. There's, it's basically code starts, you start up the garbage collector and other services, but they're fairly light and the memory footprint's pretty low. So it's pretty, it's a pretty different experience. And so it explains why in that spring pet clinic example, uh, you saw that kind of stark difference in terms of performance, startup performance and, and memory footprint. So what's going on with native image? So what it's doing is it's not just ahead of time compilation, uh, because uh, there's other things to do. Java is an interesting language in that it's not just uh, statically compiled and, and, and compiled, or, you know, anal analyzed and compiled. We're so used to, you know, class loaders and things happening at runtime. Um, it's a bit more complicated. So what happens is when you run a native image utility from GraalVM, it looks at your application codes, your byte codes, any libraries you're using, the JDK classes, and we have a thing called Substrate, which is VM, which is basically our runtime library that contains you know, manages your memory, uh, garbage collection, and so on, other services your app needs. And we take all that and we run a static analysis uh, running through your code from your main entry point of your app. Um, we run any static initializers that we need to run, um, which can be a source of, of, uh, of issues if, you're, if you shouldn't be running those at build time, and there's some controls for that. Um, but we run those initializers. Uh, and then we're going to take the code you need for your app. Basically, we've statically uh, is reachable. Uh, and compile that ahead of time. And we're gonna write out the heap uh, and put that together in, a, in an executable um, package. And we, we're, again, we're snapshotting that heap because you may have run initializers that done, has done some work at, at uh, load time. Uh, what's interesting with the, uh, the ahead of time compilation is it doesn't just dump all your code that you touch, it does further reductions. And I think I'm gonna talk about that in the, in the next slide here. So, you know, what are the characteristics of native image, right? So it starts up fast. We don't load all your classes. We don't initialize your classes at runtime. So it's faster. No byte codes don't exist. Uh, there's no JVM uh, to package. So the JVM infrastructure, um, the JDK classes aren't all there. Only those classes that you've actually used yourself. Um, interestingly, you know, there's from a security perspective with no dynamic class loading, it's a lot um, it's a lot easier for you to audit, right? There's nothing, whatever you deploy is going to be what you have at runtime. And this marries nicely with the notion of write only Docker containers, right? You basically deploy, um, that thing is a frozen um, definition of your application and, and it's easy to audit. Uh, we are using in GraalVM Enterprise Edition with the G1 garbage collector. So the latency is actually very good. Same as we're getting in hotspot. And in terms of total peak performance, we're a little bit less. So native images do suffer the disadvantage of time. So the native image utility is compiling your code at build time, 
uh, based on on just whatever information it has at hand, which is, hey, this is this is the code you need. Um, there's no way to know what's the the uh, the area that needs to be uh, specifically optimized because of heavy usage, uh, which is what the JIT compiler can do for you, right? So you're running on the JVM uh, over a long period of time or over a period of time. Um, the uh, JIT compiler has profiling data. It is able to analyze your code and uh, and refine the uh, the compiler optimization of that code to you know improve the, the machine code performance. The Innovate image can't do that. So out of the box. Uh, if you deploy an application, the JIT application will ultimately be a bit faster on peak. Uh, we're dealing with this issue through, through through things like, well, just better code code production, but also through profile guided optimization. So being able to run your app, profile it, and use that profile data, much like the JIT compiler does, uh, to compile the code. So we have a nice little loop there to improve the, the code over time. So we're working to, to close this performance gap. So. Let's just look at a, a typical Java app and just compare it. Because the, the first thing that people say is, well, hey, I can just use JLink. Um, that seems like an obvious thing to do. If I'm putting a Java in a container, I want a small footprint. I will use JLink. Uh, so if you're using JLink, then what it does is it goes through and figures out which JDK modules you don't need um, and basically removes them. Right. So you end up with a runtime package that contains the hotspot VM. Um, actually, I didn't include all the, the libs here, but you know all the libs for hotspot. Um, your app code, all those libraries you use, all those Apache libraries that got pulled into your Maven dependencies, all that still is there. So it's it does help, but it's it's not a, a ultimate solution. Native image goes further. So if I ran the native image utility on your jar, say, and it supports multiple inputs. So on a jar, uh, we're going to go through and figure out which code in the JDK itself you need, because a lot of it you don't need. Uh, which code in your application you need. So again, you know your Maven build pulled in like you know, the internet got downloaded, um, it's on your class path. You probably don't need a lot of it, most of it. Um, we just eliminate that. So we just take what you need from your app uh, and from the JDK libraries and third-party libraries and and compile that. So that's what we're dealing with. And we basically machine code generate, um, package it up with our substrate VM, the, little, the runtime services layer there, and any libs you need, which are either dynamic, dynamically or statically linked which uh, which we're going to talk about in a second. So let me uh, let me switch over to a bit of a demo here. So this is this is your basic uh, hello world, right? It can't get simpler. Everyone uses this, and uh, what's surprising actually, even with hello world, is how much of the JDK code you're going to use because you've got file system access, characters, you know, strings, whatnot, um, exception handling. There's a lot of things happening here. So if I compile this application, uh, hello world. And uh, let's see here. So I've got hold of the class. And if I run that and time it, right, 70 milliseconds, usually get some caching, gets a bit better. That was not good. Uh, OK, 74 milliseconds or so to, to boot that application and run it. Uh, now what I can do is I can take that same class and run native image. I'm going to do it the, um, if I can type here. Uh, hello world. I'll let it just run the default. Now it takes about it takes about 30 seconds on this one. I'm running on a pretty decent sized virtual machine here in in Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, and <clears throat> it's it's crunching through. Now the problem is, like I said, we're amortizing the cost. Normally, when you're running of compilation, when you're running on JVM, it happens over time. With native image, you pay upfront. So you know it may seem interactively, it's not the greatest thing. You may want to be using obviously JVM for development. But part of your CI/CD pipeline would be, I, I think, was where you slide in native image to produce these binaries. So if I take a look at what I've got now, uh, I've got a, let's see here, it's about uh, 9.3 meg. Um, it's the exact same thing, but it contains everything you need and nothing more. One thing I didn't mention is that we we don't just compile the code you think you need, but we we only compile the specific classes methods and fields. So if you don't have, you don't use a certain class or method or field, they're actually eliminated. So even though you have a class definition that contains five fields, it's possible that in the native image version of that class, it only has four because you never use that field in your application. So it's very aggressive uh, code elimination. So let's just see what it looks like to boot this. Uh, hello world, two milliseconds, right? So if you recall the Java version, is about 70 milliseconds, and this one's like two. So it's a, it's like it's something like uh, 
90s, again, we're back to about 96, 7% performance improvement on, on uh, boot time. And again, that's because there's really a lot less being done at boot time um, than would be done in a typical Java application uh, boot. All right, let's go back over here. So let's move to Docker. So the next step is, okay, I want to Dockerize these applications uh, and I want small. Right. Small is important. So small means less attack, attack surface area. It means I have fewer things to worry about having vulnerabilities in them. So I don't have to keep patching the, the packages in my container image. Um, it's less to worry about, right? It makes sense. And, and less to move around. And this is, again, this notion that small is fast because um, if I'm spinning up a, a cluster or I'm taking a, a, a cold node and I'm scaling out to that cold node and have to pull container images, I'd rather be pulling a bunch of 10, 10 meg or tens of meg um, container images than hundreds of megs, or even, and I'm sure everyone's seen it, you know, images that are gigabytes. Hopefully those gigabyte images are just build time and not runtime uh, images, but people do things uh, they shouldn't do. So there's a few things why we want uh, small images. And the basic alternatives are, are fairly well known, right? So you can take a slim image, so you can take a Debian or an Ubuntu image and you get a slim version it's basically take, take a large distro and start chucking things out to create a smaller set of, of components in your image. Um, distro list from Google, which is getting, uh, becoming popular, takes the opposite approach. It sort of starts with nothing and adds containers, or adds packages, sorry, to build up uh, what you need. Interestingly, the default of these distro list uh, container images don't have a shell, don't have wget, don't have uh, package managers. There's no way to install software into those distro list containers. Um, you can you have to use, I think you have to use the Basil uh, tool from, from Google to, to assemble these. But they're more secure because there's no way for these um, images to have anything installed into them. Of course, it's Alpine, it's quite popular. Uh, tricky thing with Alpine is um, it is based on the muscle library, which for some, some people may be a problem. Um, and the packages you may need for the, your Alpine environment may not be there. Um, lots of there, but some things may not be there. And, and Scratch is really, there's nothing in it, right? It's just completely empty. And the real key thing here, I sort of noted in, these, in, in each of these is uh, the, the C libraries. So if you're working with a typical Linux distro, you got glibc. If you're working with Alpine, you have muscle. And when you're working with Scratch, there's nothing there. So anything you deploy to a Scratch image has to be fully self-contained and fully statically linked, um, which, which we have support for, fortunately, in, in native image. So I took... Uh, that little hello world. Actually, this is a this actually is a Micronaut hello world, and I'll talk about that one in a second here. It's a Micronaut application. It uh, if I run LDD, which shows me all the libraries that are linked in, I can see that in the first column here, or second column, I've got the default linking. Like I just did native image hello. Uh, I get a bunch of libraries being linked in. Uh, if I run it with the static executable with dynamic libc, means link everything but libc. Uh, a few things get statically linked in. Still have a few things left. And if I do a full static with muscle, and I run LDD, I get, hey, it's not dynamic, like it's fully self-contained. Um, and interestingly, I do use muscle for static linking, and I'll, I'll touch on that in a second. But what this means is that given these different ways of linking, I have different options for the kinds of container images I'm late or I'm able to run inside of. Right. So if I have a typical image that's dynamic linking, uh, it can run any, it can run anything I do, statically linked, dynamically linked, it runs in the slim distro, no problem. It runs in, in distro list, sure. Um, in Alpine and Scratch, you're going to need a fully dynamically linked or statically linked image with native image. And the reason is that uh, we're all VM, um, um, we recommend you li link with, with muscle for static linking uh, rather than, than glibc. And uh, the reason is that um, there's a problem with glibc. So I actually tried this. Uh, I statically linked in glibc and native image let me do it. And it looked good. And then I ran it, um, a Micronaut application again, and it just uh, seg faulted. So um, really, if you're going to statically link, you're going to be using glibc. That's right, you're going to be using muscle, um, which is fine. So we have full support for, for muscle. All right, let's go over and look at the Docker container image uh, sort of story here. So I've got another little app. Uh, it's Micronaut. Uh, if you don't know Micronaut, it's, it's very nice. It's actually really compatible. So if you're building microservices or small services today with native image, Micronaut is a really great um, way to do that because it does all the, um, 
it doesn't have any runtime reflection. It's 100% just compile or use an annotation processor to, to generate some code at build time. So your application is um, basically easy for us to do static analysis on with native image. So it's a very compatible technology and, and we're really uh, really excited by, by, by this feature. So if I show you the app, um, application is kind of boring. It just says, hey, boot my application. This is my main. And then I've actually got a hello controller here. It exposes a REST endpoint at uh, hello and just returns example response. I actually generated this by uh, running the MN command. You can do MN space, create application, and it'll create you a template Micron app. And then I use the same uh, my, um, keyboard or command line utility to add a controller. So it's actually pretty efficient to just uh, to knock this out. So uh, I, I have used Gradle in this case. Uh, it supports Maven or Gradle. I'm actually just learning Gradle. I've never used, used Gradle much, but so far so good. And uh, it comes out of the box with support for native image. So I can type, um, for example, I can type Gradle. Nope, I have changed folders here. So I can do Gradle W and I can type native image. And it'll actually run the build. I'm not gonna do it just because the Micronaut app takes about a 90 seconds to run. It's a bit too long for us, but I've run it already. Uh, so if you take a look at um, build native image, actually I'll give you the, I've got a bunch of versions of this. I've run this, I've compiled the Micron app with default, so everything's, everything is dynamically linked, the mostly static, and then the full static. And they're actually not much different. The size of the application kind of overwhelms the library sizes in, in general. And you saw those, the, the link libraries uh, in the previous slide before. So from there, I basically want to pair these, these different versions of micro native image with the different distros. So I've got a bunch of Docker files. I can use a full uh, Debian, just basically expose the port. So it's, it's going to listen to 8080 uh, and, and basically copy it in. I can do the same thing with a slim image, right? This is not, not, not rocket science. Um, and scratch, right? So copying it in. Uh, if you want to try copying something that's dynamically linked into a scratch image and run it, you'll get a failure pretty darn quick. Uh, but let's just run this thing um, here. Let's just run this as it is. So if I run Gradle W, just to give you an idea of the speed of the Micronaut launch here, if I run this, okay, it's pre-compiled, so it's good. It's just booting, starting up. Okay, so it's it's coming. Oh, did I miss this? Oh, I did. Huh, so fast. Okay, sorry. I'm watching the ticker. Uh, 733 milliseconds. So it's pretty quick, right? So it wasn't as bad as I thought. I thought we were, we were hung there, but no, it comes up again. Here we are. So it's in the 700 millisecond range. Not too bad. If we go over here and, and curl it, right? So hello. And you get the response back, right? So it's fine. It works. Um, if I ran the native image version of that, the same micro application, we're going to see the same kind of thing we saw before, right? So this is, again, if I run, uh, just before I put the, do the Docker containerization part of this here, if I run um, the, the basic one, okay, it comes up in 11 milliseconds. So it's, again, I, I've, I've got a basically a REST, REST service running at 11 milliseconds. Yeah, it still works. It's pretty good. So what I'm going to do is containerize this stuff. Um, and let's just go over here actually because we have more room for, for Docker. So if I take a look at the Docker images I've got. So I've created a set of them uh, using those, those Docker files. And the sizes are really interesting, right? So the, the scratch image is the smallest, of course, because all that's in there is, is the app. So if I do a dive on uh, hello scratch, we'll see here we have one layer and it's got basically the application. That's all that's really in there. With uh, the others, I've got more. So I go from scratch. This list is pretty good. It's a bit bit bigger. Um, the slim is actually quite a bit bigger. So when you're choosing between slim and distro list, it's quite a huge jump in size. And then full is actually quite, quite a lot larger. And I can do the same thing with, uh, with dive there. Take a look at the, say, the full one, for example. Right? There's quite, there's some pretty big, there's a big layer there. So this, these are really interesting tools to use. There's nothing, Magical here, really basically the size of the Docker container is the size of the base image plus the size of my app because I'm just copying the app in. All right, so um, 
I think that's what we need to talk about there. Well, we're running low on, low on time here. Let's go back over the slides. All right, well, that's, uh, that's a quick, quick intro to, to, to native image and uh, container images. The key thing to keep in mind is the static linking versus dynamic linking issue and which kind of container image that you're able to go into. Um, obviously, the ideal is, is, uh, is the smallest, although these, these tiny images like Scratch have their drawbacks. Uh, if you intend to do things like have your service connect to other services using HTTPS, you're going to need certificates. Um, they're going to be installed by default in the distros containers and Scratch, they're your problem to, to install, um, that kind of thing. So these really come down to what you need in your container but smaller is best. And with native image, we have full flexibility, whether you want to run distroless, slim, full, scratch, custom, it's, it's really up to you. So we have a lot of, lot of good choices there. All right. So uh, you can find out more um, at oracle.com slash crawlvm. Also, um, we have a number of recently published native image um, blogs and, and links on our Medium um, blog. Um, so if you go to oracle or medium.com slash crawlvm, you'll find an, an ish, um, a blog on working with native image efficiently, one on understanding what's in the native image itself. So understanding its contents, I kind of give you a, a little preview of what's in there, right? The heap, the code and so on. And then also we have a, a native image quick reference we've recently published to, uh, to understand the command line abilities and, and features because there's actually quite a large set. If you do a native image uh, dash dash help, It'll dump quite a lot of a lot of information uh, out for you.